Okay, we're going to spend um, a little bit of time talking about animals. <clears throat> so this is going to be our first lesson on animals. This is going to be part one. We're going to do a little background on animals, talk about general characteristics, and then I'm going to introduce you to the first few animal groups. But we're not going to quite get to mammals like this koala for a while. So some general characteristics of animals. Um, animals are the furry things that you love the puppy dogs and the kitty cats and the bears and, and they're the whales and things like that. But also it includes all kinds of insects. It includes things like jellyfish and includes worms. So things that maybe you're not as fond of. Um, but one characteristic that animals share is that they are all multicellular and they're not just multicellular. They have complex tissues and organs. That is, they have specialized cells that do different jobs. They have cells that are brain cells, they have cells that are nerve cell, uh, heart cells, they have cells that are blood cells, specialized cells. <clears throat> they are all also heterotrophs, which means they eat to get their energy, and they are motile at least part of their lives. Motile means that they can move around from place to place. Not just that they can move, but they can locomote. They can swim, they can run, they can fly, something like that. They can move from place to place. Now, all animals have the ability to reproduce sexually, like with male and female. Some of them can also reproduce asexually, which means they can do something so that they can make offspring without a member of the opposite sex. Now, in some species, the embryo looks just like the adult in animals, but just smaller, like these puppies. They pretty much look like a, like a dog, but just smaller. In other species, and we'll talk more about this later, the young don't look at all like the adult, okay? They completely change form during their lifestyle. In this case, this is called a larva. So for instance, this is a fly. This is a baby fly. We call it a maggot, but it's, it's a fly larva. Um, the same thing holds for butterflies and caterpillars. So during the, their lifetime, flies start out like this. Then they go inside of what's called a pupa, and during the course of time, they change inside that pupa. And when they emerge, they look like the adult fly. So they go through this change of life. Some animals do that. Other animals just get bigger. They look the same when they're born, and they just grow larger. So here's the other example of an organism that undergoes this big change. So we have these caterpillars. They eat and eat and eat and grow larger. Then they become, um, they go inside of a chrysalis or a cocoon, it's sometimes called. They pupate, the word for that is pupate, and then when they emerge, they look like the adult butterfly. Another thing that animals share is that they show one kind of three kinds of symmetry. In other words, they each have symmetry, um, one of these three. Spherical symmetry means it looks kind of like a ball. Okay, It's symmetrical all directions. Radial symmetry is like a wheel. It's radial like around, but not in every dimension. And bilateral symmetry means that you can, you can divide up this animal into two halves, a left and right side. So here's a diagram illustrating that. Um, this is radial symmetry. So it's not symmetrical in every direction, but it's symmetrical around like a wheel. And then we have a beetle here, which has bilateral symmetry. You can divide it into left and right sides. We have one kind of animal. It's called a sponge. We're not going to talk much about it, but they have basically no symmetry. They're the only animal with no symmetry. All right, here's an animal that has spherical symmetry. This is a sea urchin. So you can see no matter how you divide up this sea urchin, it's going to be symmetrical. It's going to be even Steven on both sides. That's an example of spherical symmetry. Then we have an example here of radial symmetry. This is a starfish. So you can see that um, not in every direction, but in most directions, you see that there's symmetry. You can divide it up and you get symmetrical halves. You get divided halves. Sea cucumber, starfish, and sand dollar all have that. And then you can see bilateral symmetry in things like insects. So you could divide up this um, butterfly into left and right sides. That's how you know it's bilaterally symmetric. Now, bilaterally symmetric animals, we have terms for the directions. And you kind of saw this in the activity with the sharks. There's an anterior or front. There's a posterior or behind. You have the ventral, which is the belly, the underside. You have the dorsal, which is the back. And then you have the lateral, which is on the sides. You only see this in bilateral symmetry. So here's what that looks like in a turtle. We have the belly, the ventral. We have the dorsal, the back, posterior, and anterior. 
in bilateral symmetry. All right, let's talk for a minute about the animal groups. These are the main ones. We have porifera, which are the sponges. We're going to talk today about cnidaria, platyhelminthes, annelida, and mollusca. Later on, we'll talk about arthropoda, echinodermata, and chordata um, in a later lesson. So let's start with phylum cnidaria. As you can see, it includes the sea animals. Cnidarians have only two cell layers. Their whole body is only two cell layers. They are very thin. They have no head, no brain, no heart, no blood vessels. Very simple. They take food in and in the center, so down in the middle of this area here, there's a mouth. They take the food into their mouth and they di digest it and then the wastes come back out the same hole, which is very strange. But that means they can only eat if they have already finished digesting whatever they just ate. They can, they can only eat, digest, expel the waste, and then they can't eat again until they're done. Okay. The other thing that they have is that they all have stinging tentacles. Now, cnidarians have two body forms, which is kind of interesting. There's a polyp form and a medusa form. The polyp is vase-shaped and sessile, meaning it's rooted to the ground. So they swim when they're babies, and then they root to the ground, and they stay put. They don't um, swim after they're full grown. Then there's the medusa form, which is um, bell-shaped and swims around freely throughout its whole life. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's the polyp form. It's rooted to the ground, and it has tentacles sticking up. The medusa form is more shaped like a bell, and it can swim around. So you can see this is similar to a jellyfish, and this is similar to a sea anemone. So a polyp would be a sea anemone, and a medusa is a jellyfish. Those are your two body forms for cnidarians. Let's talk now about phylum platyhelminthes. These are the flatworms. Some of them are quite beautiful, as you can see. Phylum platyhelminthes, the flatworm, again has only two cell layers, very simple organisms. They have no organ systems, just like the jellyfish, like the cnidarians. These are the simplest animals with a head. So they have bilateral symmetry. They have a head, and they have sense organs in the front. Um, but they still have a one-way digestive system like the cnidarians did. They eat, they digest, and then the waste comes back out their mouth. Many of these guys are parasites. You probably wouldn't like them. Here are some examples of um, platyhelminthes flatworms. These are planaria. They live in, in ponds. Um, this is another marine flatworm of marine platyhelminthes. They live in the ocean. And then this one is a parasite. This is called a liver fluke. They're nasty. They make you very sick. The next group let's talk about are the mollusks. I love the mollusks. This is an octopus. He's a mollusk. Phylum mollusca all have soft bodies and a muscular foot. In some cases, the foot is adapted to be arms, but most of the time it looks more like a foot. Most of them have shells, although some have a shell on the inside and some have lost their shell, but most of them have a shell. They have a complete digestive system, so they have a mouth and an anus. So the food comes in, goes out a different hole so the food can keep on coming in. They can keep on eating. This is a, this is a special thing for them. Um, mollusks can reproduce sexually, although some are called hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female sex organs. So while they have to find another member of their species to reproduce, they can either be male or female in that process. That's probably a little bit strange to think about. Here are some representative mollusks. We have the snail. We have a clam, so some of these guys we like to eat. And then this is a cuttlefish. It's a relative of the octopus. All right, the last animal group we're going to talk about for this lesson is phylum annelida, or annelids. These guys are very beautiful marine worms. Phylum annelids includes earthworms, leeches, and beautiful marine worms like the one I just showed you. They all have segmented bodies, so each segment is specialized. They're starting to have more and more specialized tissues in annelids. Um, they have multiple hearts. So if you look in an earthworm or one of these other worms, you'll see many hearts. They have a complete digestive system, which means they have a mouth and an anus, so the food goes straight through. They do have a complex nervous system. They have little brains in there, and they have a circulatory system with blood vessels. So they're very complicated. You think an earthworm is kind of simple, but really there's a lot going on. Here are some examples of some annelids. We have the earthworm. 
Yeah, this is a leech. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about when I say leech, but they, they suck your blood. They attach their parasites, and they attach and suck your blood. And then th this is another marine worm. So those are the first few groups of animals that we're going to talk about. This is only part one, and we'll talk more about some different animals later.